Hello everybody and welcome to Hang Out with Heather. I am your host, Heather, as I'm sure you could assume. And today I am going to be showing you how I have made my own watercolor palettes. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, these are both that I have made myself. And it is a palette for watercolor paints. This is the first one that I made. And this tin is just from a garage sale that I got. And this one I made more recently. But just, you know, a palette for all my watercolors. I made little sheets so I know what the color is. But I figured that I've gotten a lot of questions in real life about how I've done them. So I figured if people on YouTube would like to know it as well. So I also got this tin at a watercolor. I didn't get it at a watercolor. I got it at a garage sale. Sorry. And so for the materials... I have a little tin. This is, it was a mint tin, so you can see, there's hair on it, I'm sorry. Mystifying mints, it's like a little Ouija board, but it has a little compartment inside once I ate all the mints, which were shaped like little planchettes. I got this maybe a year or two ago at Wegmans. So if you know, if you live in New York, you know what Wegmans is, it's good. And I have some double-sided tape. It is a really thin roll. But I got this at Michael's Craft Store, maybe a couple dollars. I don't know, I got it for bullet journaling, which I did for maybe half a year, and then I stopped because I stopped for some reason, so I might have to start that up again because I really enjoyed it. Scissors. These are from Walmart, I believe, in the fabric section, because I also sew. I need some watercolors. I have the Shinhan Professional Watercolors. It's very dusty, I am sorry. But... It is a set of 30, and they come in little tubes like this. And one just fell. Thrilling. But these are honestly one of my favorite watercolors I've ever used. And I have used quite a bit because I like using watercolors. But I got them on Amazon for maybe $30. I don't even know if they sell them anymore. So they might not sell this set in particular, but I'm sure they sell other ones. But these are just the ones that I like, so the Shinhan Professional, the professional watercolors. And then these are the little there's plastic in there. Little um pans, they're half pans. Also bought on Amazon. <laughs> because I don't know, Amazon. <laughs> so I'm sorry that I'm supporting, you know, the bad aspects of Amazon. But I got these also like a year ago. So first, what we're going to do, you can't really see right now, so I guess I can't really have you like that. I'll try to fix it up. So there we go. That's better. Also my Pink Floyd shirt from a fan of my dad's channel. So thank you. I don't remember who sent that, but I'm wearing it. Um, first what I'm going to do is see how many pans I can fit in here. Because I mean, oh, there is a very tiny spider attached to this one. Ew. I'm sorry, I hate spiders. They're like my biggest fear, so... Yeah. <laughs> um, so I just want to get a general idea of how many I can fit in here. Which, the tin is kind of rounded, which makes it a little a bit weirder. I'm just going to pour all of these out right now. And... Let's see, because I kind of want to have this as like a travel palette, so like the main colors that I use, which I mean, you don't have to do that, but that's just what I'm going to do. So, I'm assuming I can get 14 in here, if I can get this last one. Yes, it would be able to fit 14 like that. So, now I guess I'll decide what colors I want to use. So... Um, you can see the colors in here, they're all right there. So I never label my half pans, I mean, you can if you want to, but personally that's just too much work for me, I don't care that much. That reflects very poorly on me, but that is okay. So I will actually go ahead and use my other sheet. I make this for every palette, it just kind of shows, like, it's a guide for what colors are where, again. So I can accurately see what they all look like, and then I will decide from there. 
so I won't include white because I guess like this is every professional watercolor artist knows that you don't really use white in watercolor it's more of a gouache thing which I also really like gouache but I don't have any right now my Windsor Newton tubes dried up so that really sucked but um so I won't use white I will use black because I mean technically I guess you could also mix black but it's too much work for me I don't feel like doing that um, I guess I'll also choose a brown, just because I guess that might be helpful. I'm trying to see which ones are which. Okay, yeah. I think I'll go with this one. Let's see what color it is. Uh, Van Dyke Brown. It's kind of nice, I guess. So... <laughs> Yes, I'll continue to do that, and I will come back and tell you what colors I'm going to use. Okay, so after a long deliberation, I chose my 14 colors. So I have black, which is 402, um, Van Dyke Brown, which you saw on the last clip. Oh my god, it's not focusing. I'm so sorry, but it's, yeah, uh, 417. Bordeaux, which is kind of like a pink color. It's kind of nice. Or it's more like a kind of dark pink reddish color. Um, that one was 425. Red, 406. Vermilion Hue, which is 412, more of an orange. Um, <laughs> brown, 407. I have one brilliant, 415. 414, I'm sorry. It's more of like a peach like skin color, which is very broad since there's lots of different skin colors. But it's kind of like no, a peach color. Um permanent yellow deep 405. Just a, more of a darker yellow. Lemon yellow 411. It's a lighter yellow. Emerald green hue 428. More of a bright green color. Peacock Green, 429, which is more of like a blue-green, which I don't know, I think can be useful. Um, 420 Olive Green, for if I'm doing... This is like if I want to go plain air painting, I could do more life from it, so it's kind of nice. Uh, 415 Circuloin Blue Hue, it's a brighter blue. And then 409 Prussian Blue, which I really like, and you'll see on this kind of card the prussian blue is right here it's almost like um almost looks looks velvety to me it's so nice and deep so now i won't film all of this since and i'm sorry about that i was interrupted but where i was going was that i won't film all of this because it is long and tedious but i will demonstrate first so this part, let me move these out of the way a little bit first. We have to adhere these somehow. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, some people don't just because in case they want to move it around. And I know there's other methods that you can just glue magnets on there and it'll be magnetized from there. But personally, I just use some double-sided tape and I tape them down. And they're certainly secure, I mean, I don't ever feel like they're going to fall out. So, what I'll do is I'll cut a long strip here. Got some, something, alright. I'll cut it in half. And then, what I'll do is take my first piece, put part of it on one side. So if it'll focus, you can kind of see it. It blends in, I know. But... You put the double-sided tape on both sides of it. Like I said, it kind of blends in. But there's tape on both sides. Kind of press it down a little bit. And then peel it off. And you will have tons of these little peelies, I promise. So then sometimes this part's difficult because the tape or the kind of throwaway side doesn't always want to come off. And then first let me dump all those out and I will put it right in there so then it looks like that and it won't come out so press that down a little bit 
and it's in. So I will go ahead and do that for the other 13, and I will show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so this is what it looks like now that I have double-sided taped everything down, so yeah, and there's 14 here. And I'm surprised that it fits so many, it looked a lot smaller. I mean, it would probably be able to fit a lot less half pans. These are half pans, I meant full pans. Um, and I also forgot to mention that the brand of half pan they are, or these are, is Meaden. I don't know, you probably can't even see it. But like I said, it's got like a pack of 100 of them on Amazon, and I've already used a lot. And actually, if you're interested, I mean, this is not for sure, but I would be willing to make palettes like these. If you have a certain brand watercolor that you want, let me know. I can order it and I can make these for you, you know, for however many, however much money. Or even I can just make them empty like this and you put your own in there. So, I might make an Etsy. Who knows? Because I'd be more than willing to, so... I can, it's pretty easy to find these pans, even if I just use mints or go to different vintage shops. But I might make another video about that. I still have to think about that. But if you're interested, comment below, and then I'll see if there's actual interest I can consider it. But now it is time to fill it. So let me angle this a bit further down, see if I can get that to... There we go. I'm filming with my phone right now, and I don't want it all tipped over. So first, I will start with black, and in the past, I used to only fill it up like one, like halfway, kind of, but now I've decided it's sometimes easier just to fill it up entirely. So I am kind of running out of paint. Well, I'm not really running out of paint. I still have plenty in here, but, you know, for someone who was a broke college student, this is running out. So, I still have quite a bit, <laughs> but now this is what it looks like. It's not filled up completely. It will settle, and I could also, I mean, you don't have to. I probably won't, <laughs> but you can take a toothpick and kind of spread it out more even, but it doesn't matter to me. I'm just going, just going to be painting with it, so. I'm trying to see. Now I'm going to use the Van Dyke Brown. And just do the same thing. Fill this one up a bit better. Yep. Oops. So, now this part isn't super exciting if you can't really see it, so I'm sorry I don't have any, like, rig to put it in, or film it better, but I'm trying my best. So, I will just continue to do this. I'll try and be as fast as I can. So this is now on Bordeaux. I guess I'm kind of doing this from, like, dark to light. Let me... Yeah, this one's also kind of filled halfway... But sometimes it's easier just to, if you want a lighter amount of watercolor, sometimes it's easier just to have that little open space at the bottom there. That's what I found with this one. So you can see I only filled it up halfway, and thus I was able to use that white spot at the bottom to get that nice gradient. And you can see what colors I've used a lot of, like that one or this one. So... I would definitely say, I guess this is also kind of a review, a review of the Shinhan watercolors, but they certainly last. I feel like you're not using a ton, so it's definitely worth the money to me, but actually let me start putting these away. So, um, yes, I would definitely recommend them. I try to find the link and put it in the description, just because... These are my f absolute favorite watercolors. They're just fantastic. And the color variety even is just wonderful. This really sounds like an ad right now. I'm not sponsored by them, but if you are uh, someone that works at Shinhan Watercolors, please message me. I would be more than happy to rep you. <laughs> but yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I just did the red. And now this is Vermilion Hue, so let me show. This is what it looks like so far. You can see it kind of is going to do the full pans, but now I'm just going to go with the half pans. Half the half pans. It's just easier for me personally. 
So next row, first five down. Put some brown in. This is, yeah, just brown. And having this variety does help because I know that some people only like to get the base colors that are like primaries and like black and white. But personally, I like having the variety because every single time you're painting, you're not going to want to have to mix every single color. So having the browns and the peach color for skin or hair and having several shades of pink and purple and blue, it just helps overall with saving time and the colors look good because sometimes you'll get paints that the colors kind of look like trash, like tempera paints or whatever, which whatever, if you use tempera, good for you. <laughs> I'm not judging you, it's your money, but personally, this is just what I like to do. I like to have these good colors that I know and trust. So I did kind of go out on a limb when I first bought these. I hadn't really heard anything about them. I just looked up watercolor um, tubes on Amazon, and this is one of the ones that came up, and I read the reviews. They sounded good, you know, the pictures seemed fine, so I took that risk, and I enjoyed it. I've just been putting these away, I'm sorry. Um, I just used the One Brilliant, the Permanent Yellow Deep, and the Lemon Yellow, and this is Emerald Hue. Also, I'm sorry if I'm not talking loud enough, I'm just very soft-spoken. Okay, this is Peacock Green, also this is what it looks like. I've just been kind of rambling, so I guess you can skip by this part if you want to, but... Then I'm talking for nothing. Okay. Yeah, you can see the peacock green is a lot darker. I'll actually show you what it looks like on the sheet that I made. Because it's just so pretty. This is it right here. Again, along with the Prussian blue. It almost looks like velvety. It's such a pretty color. And same with this red down here. Because you can see that there's a wide variety of colors. And... This is a sheet that I made just recently, a couple weeks ago, and then, oops, did I dip my, okay, let me sure I didn't dip my bracelet in there. And then this is one that I made maybe a year ago, so last summer. Um, so it definitely, it's steadfast, I guess. It doesn't fade in the sun or anything, not that it's really bad in the sun. And for this one, I just did the, the gradient, so the kind of most vibrant color, the most layered on color versus that gradient down into more watery so i feel like there's just a lot of potential with these so yeah so i just definitely recommend them because i know i hate trying to buy a product and not knowing anything about them and having no videos about them and i'm like no it's not really oh it's like should i buy this product or not you should buy it because especially if you're getting 30 um 7.5 milliliter tubes for maybe $32. That's not a bad deal. I mean, some people might be cheap and be like, oh no, that's too expensive. But like for a dollar a tube, you can't really go wrong with that. So that was just the olive green. I've been continuing to ramble. I'm sorry. This is Circuloin Blue Hue. I'm already loving the way this palette looks. So not to toot my own horn or anything, but it looks very nice. And then this is the Prussian Blue. Yeah, I definitely decided to fill it up halfway again. This is the first time, like I said, I made this maybe a week ago. Well, you can see the yellow's kind of cracked and sticky. But generally, I don't feel like that's something that happens. I think it's just because I was using it and it kind of it's all frazzled. But originally, I had done this palette the same way that I did the other one when I filled up halfway. I decided to go back and refill it again. And... One color I find that you really need to mix is the um, emerald green hue. It is more of like a light kind of bluish green, but I find that you really need to mix it because it kind of gets weird and you can see kind of like the oils that have been used to mix it. But okay, well, I might make another video just about it. But so this is the finished palette. You can see that I'll put it this way as well. There is definitely a lot of color variation, and it's perfect just to kind of throw in your bag and go and do some plein air painting, or if you just want to 
paint at like a cafe or whatever, I find that these little mint containers are perfect for them. So I am definitely, I actually enjoy making them. It's kind of soothing. The, my least favorite part is having to use the double sided tape. So, but I mean, that just works for me because then if I need to, I can take them out, but they're not so like loose, like not taped on well that they're going to fall out. So I definitely feel like that's a perk. And so I will go ahead and make the same kind of reference sheet as I did with the other ones. I won't do it in this video or I don't know if I'll make a video about it at all. Maybe I will just because it kind of is helpful for people. So yeah, I think I will make a different video about that which, when I put that up, which might be a little while after I put this one up. I will link it down below. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me put this more up in my face now that I'm talking. Um... Please let me know what you think and if you've ever made a palette like this. You know, it's pretty nice. I like it. And again, feel free to comment down below if you'd be interested in buying a pre-made palette like this. Even without the paints, just with the plain half pans in there. If you're interested, I am more than happy to make them for you on commission. Of course, I'm not going to make anything for free. <laughs> but, just kidding. But definitely, I... I'm a college student, like I said, or I'm an incoming college student, and I need to be able to make money somehow. So this video has been super long. I'm very sorry about that. But I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was decent to hear my melodic voice guide you. <laughs> Just kidding. But yes, I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for hanging out with me. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.